Welcome to the Immortal Art Podcast. I'm your host, Eldin. This is episode 9, The Artists, The Creators. Before I begin, there is a Patreon link for the podcast if you want to support me. For the price of a cup of coffee per month, or a donut if you feel like it, you can help this podcast. You can cancel it whenever you want, whether the money doesn't suit your needs, or if there is an issue with your finances, no strings attached. You can find all the details on Patreon. If you haven't, make sure to subscribe and follow the podcast, so you will never miss an episode. I appreciate it. You can reach me at the Immortal Art Podcast at gmail.com. This podcast has an Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter page. All the links are included in the episode's description. Also, if you like the podcast, rate it on your favorite podcast app, or leave a comment or a like on a YouTube. Thank you. This episode will be short, and it will be only audio. I recently got the mail, and this person who wants to be anonymous asked me to speak about the artists. In this episode, I will talk about what it means to be an artist. What is their role in society? Artists are people who can express the unknown. Artists point to the things that didn't even cross the collective conscience in society. Imagine first painters in a cave. They must have been a first person who painted the very first bison or a horse. Nobody before this very first drawing had seen a representation of a horse or a bison. And then it was there on the walls of a cave. Artists are a group of people that move society on an emotional level. They move culture into a known. They communicate with the rest of their community by representation in lines, shapes, words, or whatever their medium is. Artists live on the edge, always. Existential edge, financial, societal, and so on. Their most dangerous class of people. Artists can in one point mingle with the richest, creme de la creme of society, and in next moment they are in the gutter with the lowest of the low, and they are forgiven for jumping from one class to the other. Whatever their art medium or expression is, the creators, the artists, they are very, very special people. The creators, when they create their art, they use imagination to solve a particular problem of their theme or to convey a message. You can say that artists like to solve problems. Yes, but the result, the consequences of their solutions are paintings, sculpture, poems, music, and so on. The art itself is the aim, not a specific piece of art. Artists, the creators, they are always trying to formulate the societal or personal problems, and as I said, the solution, the byproduct of it, is art. Not everyone is creative equally, otherwise, everyone would be an artist. Creators are different from non creators, from, let's call them, consumers. The creative people do creative things and always experience novelty. And they are rare. Artists, the creators, are different indeed. I'm not talking about ripped jeans, tattoos, piercings, or colored hair. I'm talking about people that are consumed with the will to create. Don't think that everyone who is creative has a good thing in their lives. The creators and their novelties, unconventional music, understanding of poetry, observing the world as it is, and making statements about it. This all sounds good, but it's not a good thing. The artists usually produce the work of great emotional value, but most of them cannot monetize and direct that monetization towards themselves. Since I was a little boy, I paint, draw, and made stories. After elementary school, which I was bad in all subjects, especially science, 
I decided to apply to secondary art school. I went to an entry exam and I passed it. The next four years, I painted, I draw, I studied history of art, I read immortal classics of literature, and I've studied hard because I liked it. I had the luck that I had two very good teachers who taught me to do all of it and how to observe art. They made me an artist. I applied to Academy of Art in Sarajevo five times. On the fifth time, and only because I, with the help of my father, paid a bribe to a teacher, I was in. Bosnia is a very corrupt country. I had a problem on Academy since day one. I openly supported, in that time, LGBT community, and my teacher thought of homosexuals as abomination and even thought that I'm gay. My teacher told me that I'm faggot. Yeah, that's the word that she used. I was expelled after three years of studying there. Later, I learned that it was only an excuse because I didn't, or my father didn't, pay enough money as a bribe. In that time, I dated a girl from Sweden, and I moved to Sweden. In order to finish my bachelor in Sweden, I had to learn the language and pass all the exams. It took me a few years until I was eligible to even apply to the Academy of Arts in Gothenburg. First time, I was denied. Second time, I was in. I live in Gothenburg, and cultural life in Gothenburg is bad. There are no many galleries, and I had only two exhibitions here since 2014. I have stopped applying for the exhibitions because I'm always denied. But it's not only me. There's a lot of artists who are denied in galleries in Gothenburg. Anyway, this is a little introduction of my educational life as an artist. Now, let me continue talking about artists in general. The art is to join, to adjust, to put things together. The beauty or what is pleasing to an eye, is different from culture to culture. Artists create outside of traditional categories of art, especially nowadays. Artists usually make their art in rough neighborhoods, making it livable for the residents, and people with money start to move in the same area, making artists, who as I told you before, have no money, move out to the different areas of the city or a town, or community, and so on. The creators have a problem. When they do something original, a book, a painting, a film, whatever, their work has to compete with million others who did the same. It is difficult to produce something creative and then make money. If you think it is easy, do it yourself with something completely different unseen in the human civilization to this very point, and go out there and try to sell it, or even explain to the people what you did. It is very difficult. It is a lottery in a sense. You have to be in the right time, at the right place, with the right people to succeed. And those who make it, they make it spectacularly. Everyone else is miserable and forgotten. Many creative people have tough lives, but they live in hope that maybe, one day, their art will live on. Remember Van Gogh? What a misery of life, but what a win for his art. Creators have to create, otherwise they die, literally and figuratively. We all heard about the director who talks to an actor or an actress and they connect their art on some profound level. Or a writer who writes so quickly that his or her hands cannot keep up with their thoughts. Or a painter that makes a painting so mesmerizing that people stare at it for hours. Personally, I don't believe in waiting for a muse or inspiration to come. I have to chase it. Of course, we are not the same. None of us. But in the same time, we are so like each other that we understand art across time, geographies, and cultures. We understand the work and creative magic behind it. We are moved by it in some way. Even if we don't like it, 
Even if he doesn't speak to us, we understand that the artist invested several hours, days, months into creating his or her work. The artwork doesn't just pop up into existence. There are sometimes years that led to creation of a specific artwork. The writer rewrites the story, working over every single sentence for who knows how long. Then the editor reads it and makes adjustments, only to be read easily for the audience. Ernest Hemingway said, quote, Easy reading is hard writing. The artists, the creators, usually don't have these magical moments. Hard work, disappointment, and discontent indeed drives artists to create. I am one, and I know many that maybe do not use these three words as I am, but the thread, the idea of what I'm trying to say is the same. Is it a modified perfectionism? Maybe. Everyone strives to be better in what they do, or to be a better person. I guess that applies for all people. Every day, in every aspect, we are making more and more progress. Every day, in every aspect, I am making more progress. It's a mantra of one Bosnian film from 1980s called Do You Remember Dolly Bell? I recommend it. Also, the script author, poet Abdullah Sidran, is a great poet. I recommend his poetry books too. I don't know if they are translated on English. Anyway, if you want to be an artist, if you want to do art, well, do it. Those who like it, will like it. Those who don't, will not. But most of the people will never heard about it. You don't have a control over that. Easy. Is it good art that you make? If it is to you, then it is good art. Van Gogh's paintings were not appreciated by anyone. He made better paintings every week than the one before. He grew as an artist, as a painter. Galleries and museums make gazillions of money because he suffered. Is your art good? Is it complex? Do you have the money or the time to make what you want? Is your art shallow, pretentious? Doesn't matter. Just do art if you want to. If you can't, and you just want to appreciate art, and you want to know more, well, you are on the right podcast. Stay tuned. This concludes this episode. I don't know else what to say in this episode. I want to thank you for joining me and listening to this episode. I hope I inspired you. I hope you learned something. The music is performed by my friend Sebastian. You can check his band Cadavera. The link is below. Enjoy the song. Until the next time. Goodbye. Mm-hmm.